Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. So we've been discussing the story of barrister Uju Kennedy Ohane and how she came back after being removed from being a minister to doing what she's always done, which is speak up, mm -hmm. you know, boldly for the underserved. And she was wearing a legal um, cuts appearance mm -hmm. outfit mm -hmm. and saying, this is what I'm doing. And but we now segued into the conversation around career politicians and... Can I say something before you go? Okay. That I have to admit that she's the first person that I've seen in the wig and gown that looks really good. Very <laughs> yes. Just for the side. No, she yes. is. She does. Does. I don't think I didn't agree exactly. that. Uh, we've said we I personally want don't want the wig. Want personally, I don't, I don't like want the wig. I think there's a, there's, a, there's a country that said they don't want that. Yes, they've stopped it. Stopped a few countries have stopped it. Yeah. Nigeria hasn't Nigeria joined them yet. Just, just in case you are still thinking about it, the ladies of your view all support the Nigerian government. It's a small win. It will give us some kind of wings if the government just said they are stopping the wearing of wig and gown. You know, some little, little things that will mm -hmm. just make you make the government feel like, ah, you are Something. doing some gege stuff. So please, call this little win for us. <laughs> but really, I love what Mayam was saying about the fact that it's sometimes this challenging mm -hmm. for technocrats to step into the role of politics. And even though they might be appropriate, they've had some goofs in past times where, because they don't understand the... The politicians, you know, Mariah will say they speak the language of the people. people. <laughs> they, they know how to get to the people. Mm -hmm. And some of us that we feel we are educated cannot relate with all they are doing. But um, how do we find that balance, Nima? How do you think we can find the balance of using um, the gift of technocrats' ability to not need the money because they are already doing very well, they are successful, and yet be able to um, take advantage of our political... Um, Politicians, career politicians, who they know the people, they know how to talk to them and get the votes and get them get, get their buy-in. So there are certain areas in leadership or in development of any community that requires expertise, and it's not about knowing the people and everything. You know, um, I criticize uh, the Speaker of Lagos when he returned the nominees for the for the governor's cabinet because I had experience with the essay on works then. If not for that, our expertise and our, 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 uh, open door uh, policy, all the Road was going to bury me when <laughs> it was bad. Mm. And, you know, we're constantly locked in by the number of terminals. I spoke to MPA boss. We spoke to everybody else on the show. But she would reach out. She gave me a contact person of the contractors working. If they block the road unexplainably, she walked, you could reach her. And see the work road today. We have traffic light. Everything is done. We do video. <laughs> of Lagos can shoot a Zoom mm. video on that area. And so such expertise, you, and she was from the private sector. Okay. Yeah. She came in with the expertise, she delivered. So, so you can bring that in. But there's a place also for the politicians. There's a place where, you know, like, places like civic duties, other, uh, you know, sectors where the politicians' expertise are, uh, are needed. There's also a place where they match. A person can mm. be a technocrat and say be a peop, uh, people's uh, person. Mm. And those are the stars. Yeah. Mm. So those ones who can <laughs> do the no delivery both. well, who can merge well, they're also there. So there's a place for everybody and we need each person part time. But to cancel one for not being the other, I don't agree. So we don't need to. We don't need. So, but well, I think that, okay, so sometimes I would like to put myself in that kind of situation. Oh, like, sir, me, that apologies, Ramatu. I have a oh. call. Let me just take this call. Good morning. Welcome to the show. Please, when you call in, listen to your phone, not TV. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Rose. Welcome to the show, Rose. Oh, Apollo, please, when you call into the show, listen to your phone, not the TV. The TV is a bit delayed, and it takes, it takes us more time also to... turn down the Yes, volume. and you could just mute the TV when, once you get on the phone. So, Ramatu, you were going to say something. Okay, so, I was going to say that, okay, I know somebody that um, her husband was made governor, and when the husband was made governor, she automatically was first lady and all, and she had a very beautiful business that was going on for her. And, of course, she, because of the um, first lady um, business that came up for her, she struggled she really struggled to keep that business so what she did was she um, got some people to manage the business while she went on with the first lady this and all. but by the time she came back the business had already started going 
crumbled. You know, so it crumbled and all. And she was really trying to balance the two. So all I'm just trying to say is that some people are very good with the, they can't do two things together. So the part where you say, okay, it's politicians do this while you have something running by the side. Some people do not know how to manage both at the same time. So some will just do the one that they can do that is in front of them, first of all, and then be able to then go back and then concentrate on the other one that they are doing. So she struggled a bit and that, for that reason, that business um, crumbled. And then, you know, she continued with the politi um, politician stuff and everything as for her husband. And then afterwards, it was when the husband, you know, they moved in from office. That was when she went back to the business and they started from the scratch all over. And, said it, and then went up. And I remember one time like that, I think Topper, you were on the show when we talked about one, um, there was this governor that came and said that his salary was small. And then they now mentioned all his businesses that he's doing. But he came and he said that the money that he's being paid, that is small, that is not enough to go around his personnel and everything. Yeah. So you can imagine, he was saying, as he was saying, he was small. We all were saying that ah, you run a business and everything. Why don't you, okay. you know, take from there and you know and be comfortable and all? And he was now trying to explain that he cannot bring his personal um, funds yes. to yes. run to run so the it's government. So the government. So uh -uh. and that's what he said. Blessing from Portacot. Welcome to the show. Good morning, blessing. Good morning. Uh, uh, good morning. Uh, I, I want to comment on uh, Eric Awuju's uh, topic. Um, personally, I think I will choose the calling. I'm calling it to defend uh, young women, I'm calling it to defend women. Hmm. Unfortunately, her personality was misinterpreted by the women. So before, I think when she was back, uh, I already coming from the of this speech. And he was a, uh, he, he, he complained about his disability. Now, one thing I want Nigerians to know, every individual has their personality. We all have different temperaments. How Bianca Ujuku will handle a position is different from how uh, Uju will handle her position. Mm. So my personality should not be linked to how I, I handle my work. Mm. The most important thing is that the job is done. Sure. Is when she is in, uh, in like, executing that job, is she, is she is speaking on somebody's right? Is she stepping on food? No, she's doing her job. If I want to express myself, can I express myself calmly? And all that person has to uh, speak with aggression. It all depends on how we will it. So I think that one has done it before. Thank you, and I'm a first time with Paula. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for your contribution. So, uh, you know, I was, um, I, I'm, I'm, when, she, when you were talking about the technocrats um, into um, politicians and stuff, I feel like sometimes we blame technocrats for not understanding politics by, and when we, we did not prepare them, mm -hmm. yeah. we just throw them into politics. Office. Someone that has always worked in the corporate environment where everybody knew what to do, the goals were clear, then you now said the person should become a minister or become a governor, and then... You, the person feels the like, you, should, you know what I'm here to do. I'm here to make your life better. Yeah. Why should I be begging you to make your life better? So I, I, it now occurred to me that maybe we should have a training school. Or like once you, if, you, if it's political appointment, there should be like an orientation camp mm -hmm. for every political appointee or every elected official. N not camp, orientation process. <laughs> Where you get indoctrinated into, this is governance, so this is not your private your business. business. This is what you are expected to do. This is how you are expected to do it. We need to have that for all political office holders, whether elected or appointed, a one week or retreat process where- I don't think one week be enough. <laughs> it might be a way you do like a- this one month. understand Nigeria. Yes, just even, even just setting the right parameters for KPI. This mm -hmm. is is what you're expected to do. Mm -hmm. This is how Nigerians are going to measure you. This is the Nigerian dream. This is what we're trying to achieve. So you're going to align with this one. Or we could even include um, this training program on communication because sometimes people are doing the right thing, but the way they say it can then lead to mm -hmm. something else. So that's maybe one week is too small. Maybe <laughs> one month. Maybe, no, but they, they are really, smart people. You know, they, they are adults. They can get it in one week if we condense the training well. Oh. We need something like that. For lawmakers on the National Assembly, there's this two weeks yes. uh, 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 crash training okay. on drafting and whatever they do for them. And legislature, mm -hmm. orientation, mm -hmm. legislation, whatever, whatever they do for them. They should just add this one 
Exactly. Stop enjoying inside. <laughs> let them be. Let them, let them be, uh, be continuously reminded mm. that they are there to serve us. Yeah. That they are there for us. As opposed to checking whether one billion naira for cars come, ten billion naira jeep have come, all those kind of costs mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. that they focus on. We saw that when the house uh, was inaugurated, and money for car came out, bam. Before they say, no, we're not there. It was approved before we came. Mm -hmm. Everybody shall collect cash. Yeah. There's opposition plus the mm -hmm. uh, party. Mm -hmm. When we are chopping, we don't talk. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, let's take Dan from Suriliri. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Um, good, morning. Mm -hmm. good morning, Lima, my... Uh, my in law from Kogi. <laughs> in law from Kogi. <laughs> they took well, you home. Well, 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 uh, I just wanted to quickly also add to the discussion on the table. Unfortunately, in Nigeria, we just select people who are not ready for leadership position. I will just throw them there. And sometimes you don't even have to supervise what they are doing. You just go out like, you know, like headless chicken, not even mind how they are bearing in office. Um, the woman lawyer lady, former minister, for me, she may have the right intention, but her disposition while in office was a major issue. You see, leadership is not just for anything. If you get into that position, it is important that you comport yourself. You know, there are certain things you don't say in the public. You need to relate, just like the um, you just said mm -hmm. you know, a few, few minutes ago that there need to be like an orientation process. Of course, that's how it is at first world. In America today, in as much as are trying to stop a lot of things for once a president wins the election, he goes in for another one or two months of the system. You know, we don't have that here in Nigeria. And I think it is very, very necessary and critical at this point that whoever is selected to take any leadership we shall need to go through orientation yes. mm. so they will come with the air of i can do it all by myself and at the end of the day they fail in office and nobody even they are not even accountable after their time in office so i think it's important i like a woman she has always gone back to her first law which is uh, the, uh, uh, at the mm. mm -hmm. but she needs to know that i mean what are the lessons she Take away from being a minister and how she said she needs to sit down and look at how she set it up and work hard so that when the next opportunity comes, which I know will come. All right, thank you so much for your contribution, Mr. Dan from Suleiman. You're going to say something. Okay, no, um, I remember. So there's this person I saw, Dr. Joe Abba, on mm. Twitter. Mm. I remember there was one time he made a post where he said that, you know, for a lot of people in the private sector, they have all these ideas of how government should be run and mm -hmm. what it should be. And then when they get into government, they realize that, it's oh, a it's a game. whole different story. Because when you have the good ideas and the good policies, that is just one part of the you know, mm -hmm. conversation. There's a conversation of putting so many other things into consideration. You have to put in the, diff the states. You have to consider the states. Does this state need more help than the other states? You have to consider gender. There are just so many biases, you know, mm -hmm. that you need to consider. And so you find yourself, even though you were such a high flyer and you did so when you were celebrated in the private sector, some of the um, uh, restraints, you know, that you would had. have in a government setting, you don't have in private sector. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of things is just about how, in, in private sector, it's just about thinking smart, finding creative ways to do it. However you do it, mm -hmm. you get to the goal. That's it. Mm -hmm. Government, you have to think about it and think, how would it affect the northerners? How would it affect the easterners? How would yeah. the Yoruba people take mm -hmm. it? How would the Christians take it? Who got it? Who got it last time? Was it the seniors <laughs> yeah. or the juniors? You know, those are sort of things that oh, you have to Nigeria, handle. Nigeria. And that's why I believe that mm. instead of waiting until Mm. You know, you get a political appointment. There has to be something that all Nigerians participate in. Mm. Understanding understand. governance. So that you just never mm. know. Just the way that you take us through the NYSC. And really, I think in the beginning was just to give us some sort of military training. Mm -hmm. When war happens, you know, it's just conscript <laughs> coppers. But also, it should also be a, a, a situation where... 
you know, Nigerians learn, you know, mm. about governance and how to engage communities and how, you know, and the different biases that we have in our, in our country and how to engage them properly for development. I think that will go a long that way help. helping us. Instead mm -hmm. of waiting for a one week or two week period where you're just coming to terms with some of these things. Thank yeah, you so much. Um, I, that's all we can take on this topic. We've actually shared a whole lot. Um, of course, we celebrate Barista Uju Kennedy, and we hope that many other ministers who were have been reshuffled mm -hmm. out of position will follow our example. Um, we would like to see more people that are not in political positions speak truth to power and continue to do what good work they've been doing be, before they got into position in the first place anyway. And we're looking forward to the national reorientation or national orientation <laughs> uh, period before any political appointment. That's what we can take on this segment. We have a Let's Talk, a guest joining us in a few minutes after we take this break. When we return, stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.